Good to see you this morning. I'm going to be teaching Sunday school. Since the fathers fell asleep, you know, all the Hebrew prophets and all the uh, famous people from Hebrew history, all the way up to today, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. So, nothing's happened yet, and that doubt is dangerous. So, you know, there are two groups of people, the doubters and those who have assurance, who have hope, who trust in the Lord. And some of those who doubt actually came from the ones who used to believe. So, judgment is terrible. It's not, it's serious. Doubt is dangerous. <coughs> You're not going to be able to make excuses. You're not going to be able to avoid God's judgment. All of God, God sees all of your life. <coughs> and you can't whitewash it. You can't evade God's judgment. <coughs> and so, Peter 
goes on to describe how terrible God's judgment is. For this they are willingly ignorant of, that the word of God, by the word of God, the heavens were of old. So, back in the old days, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth standing out of the water and in the water. This is talking about the flood of Noah, whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. And that was judgment. God set terrible judgment on the people of that time because they made fun of, they mocked God, they made fun of Noah for building the ark because before that time it had not rained. And so Noah was telling them it was going to flood and people made fun of him. So God's judgment is terrible. Don't doubt. Don't doubt. God's judgment is coming. The beast walk with God in his presence. And then we don't need to worry about God's judgment. When we're in sin, it's different. Then we're in danger. But the heavens and the earth, which are now, by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly man. He says, so don't be a doubter. Said, I'm going to give up because I believe in this and it, nothing has happened. I'm going to give up. And so they joined the doubters' team. And that's sad. Mm -hmm. So this is a warning to us. The most important thing is that we need to please God, to stay with God, and mm -hmm. stay in His presence. And that's how we avoid judgment. People in Noah's time, you know that the time didn't slow down, it went quickly for them. And they were gone quickly. Judgment is a terrible thing. The word resist means to fight against or refuse. So that's a good concept, that we refuse people who mock us and make fun of us. It's better to please God and walk with God. Old Testament prophets and the New Testament apostles warn believers about what would happen in the last days. And that was the judgment. So, it wasn't, it's not something that just happened in the New Testament. The Old Testament also warns about God's judgment. Prophecy prophecies and teachings of the apostles. People like Enoch who walked with God and God took him. So we are warned <coughs>
after Jesus went back to heaven. So once Jesus went back to heaven, now we are in the last days. And we look forward to his second coming. We're living in the last days now. So it's important that we know for sure. And we look forward to God's promise that he's going to come again. And doubt is dangerous. Peter wrote about some of the things that false teachers do and say. They're very skilled and smooth thinkers. They're smooth talkers. We may not be, you know, other people may be more skilled than me, but they can fool you. Of they have of their of their skill. So we study those things in the last lesson. Mm -hmm. so what we follow is not people's opinions or philosophies. And now Peter warns the believers that people will mock them because they believe Jesus was the earth. So it's better let the switch it turn to so good. Thank you. Okay. So it's important. <laughs> Those who mock us, we not feel embarrassed about them. Trust God. More important. judgment. People say it has been a long time since Jesus said he would return. He said, I'll come back. And the disciples were waiting for him for many years, and people are still waiting for him. But we need to stand firm in the faith. Praise <coughs> God. That's what's important. Not to give way to doubt. Because God's judgment is a terrible thing. And I said, where is he? What the doubters were saying. You know, I feel like I'm wasting my time. But don't feel that way. Trust in God is better than trusting other people. They argue that their fathers have lived and died. The Old Testament prophets, too, they were watching for Jesus' return, and Jesus hasn't come back yet. Their time to ours. What's important is that we need to stand firm and stand in the faith. We know that it's going to happen to you as we can trust in God. The world continues as it always has been. And the doubters say God hasn't done anything different. But we need to trust in God. They teach that God had not been involved in the earth since he made it. blessings around us that come from God. So, 
God is blessing us. judge the world. The whole world. Do you want to be one of the doubters facing God's judgment? That's dangerous. scoffers or critics. They mean the same thing. People who criticize and people who mock us call us dumb and stupid. Say this is a waste of time. You don't want to listen. Please remember it's important to stay with God and trust in God families as they grow up. So it's dangerous to doubt. They really don't want to believe that he will return. They forget they forget that life is temporary. You're Life is not forever. We don't live here but for a short time. The time we are born, the time we get old, the time is nothing to God. He is eternal. When we are born, we are born, and then we get old. stages of life. But time doesn't, time is nothing to God because he's eternal. The scholars say the world is the same as it always has been. So, Peter warns us against this. So we pray for wisdom among us, the doubters. So please pray and witness to those people. Try to 
convince them to turn aside and look out. They believe that God will judge them. If God judges all of us, He will. They just go on living in simple ways. It's sad. They're not afraid of judgment when they don't believe that Jesus will come back. So we have to witness to them and tell them the truth. <coughs> we, have, we should feel sorry for them <coughs> and pray for them. And some critics say that God's never been involved in human history. But really we can see how God has blessed us through his word, and still is today. <coughs> Peter says these scoffers and false teachers can get at least one very important time. They don't want to remember the time of great flood covering the earth. That was one of that was the worst judgment on the earth since it was created. Mm -hmm. He just said that God made the heavens and the earth. He created everything by his word. Yes, by his word, remember God. Nothing can defeat God. He has, <coughs> he has the power to do that. And scoffers ignore how the world was created by His Word. God created water. created everything that we see as we go on earth. We go to other countries. We go to New York. the earth. He used it for judgment. <coughs> he judged the sinful people of the earth and destroyed them out of water. It was a slow process either. It happened instantly. Today, we talked about how <coughs> God's judgment is so slow, but in Noah's time, it happened very quickly. And God saved Noah and his family, but he didn't save anybody else. So that says that God means business. And he has power that we can't equal and can't overcome. judged them and punished them because they rebelled against him. And some people are afraid when they think about the next judgment from God. But we don't have to be afraid. We can enjoy our relationship with God. Believers don't have to fear. We should be happy that God is coming back in the last day. We will go to heaven for eternity. <coughs> we'll be happy to look at Jesus when he comes back to earth again. So we should be.
people thrilled. You spend time with God, you don't need to worry about the judgment. Judgment is for those who are rebellious. Thank you. We should feel sorry for them and try to get them to join the family of God and witness to them. <coughs> We need to remember that God created the world with his word. <coughs> it's a big world. You go to Israel. You have to fly all night to get there. So it's a, it's a big world. And it was all created by God. Russia and China, they have atomic bombs too. We see the destruction they can cause, but the word of God is more powerful than atomic or hydrogen bombs. Chinese and the Russians and men. We don't need to worry because God's in control. We show our sure knowledge about the second coming when we resist teachers of teachings of the doubters, doubters and scoffers. skilled speakers. And I'll try to convince you that they're right. But the truth is in the word of God. And that's what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Not them. We rest our work on our beliefs in the truth. The truth is in the Bible. And some of the doubters are very skilled. God will take care of us. If someone comes to us and says something that seems to make sense, be careful. <coughs> we demonstrate our 
assurance that the second coming of Jesus by the way we act. is long suffering to us for not willing that any should perish. He's long suffering and patient with us, giving us time to repent. Not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repent. <coughs> so what we need to do is witness to people. And they will realize that ourselves separate from them. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. Mm -hmm. and, up, and you won't yeah. have to know what's happening until you know you can't say, well it's going to happen at about one or two o'clock in the morning. People mm -hmm. don't tell you when they're going to break into your house.
nevertheless we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth. We're in dwelling righteousness. <coughs> Sorry for them and what this is. Many people wanted to know why Jesus hasn't come back yet. We don't know why. They wanted to know the exact time he would come again. And again, we don't know. time when God first appeared, he's eternal. God made time for man. In Ecclesiastes, it talks about a time for happiness, a time for sadness, a time for, for everything. God is eternal. He gave us night and day and days and years. delayed the judgment he promised. He was waiting until all the saved, that all those who can be saved, are gathered. The reason, another reason that Jesus has not returned is that Peter says God's patient with him. God being patient with us. And sometimes we make mistakes, we do things wrong. God's patient with us. He has mercy for us. He's waiting. He's waiting to be saved. So, when people ask why God hasn't come back yet, this is 
one reason why. Because God doesn't want anybody to be lost. So we need to witness to people. As Jesus said, very clearly, go into all the world. Go and witness to them. He wants everyone to have the opportunity to be his child. Trust in God and look forward to His coming again. He's waiting for people to repent. And so, what we need to do is witness to Him. God didn't send the flood immediately when people started sinning. He was patient and waited until it was the right time. It took Noah a hundred years to build the ark. God gave him time, but people were still rebellious. He waited for over a hundred years. God gave him time, and today, we look forward to God's coming. He's giving us time. But when it happens, it will happen fast. He gave people many opportunities to repent and change their lives. They refused and continued in their sinful lives. So sometimes you witness to people and they say, yeah, yeah, I know. All you can do then is pray for them. I was one of those people who said, yeah, yeah, I know, until all of a sudden it realized, I realized that this was a serious thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, be serious about it. So God has the right to wait for as long as he wants to wait. It's his time, not ours. We can't tell God what to do. What's important is to please God. We must be thankful he waited long enough for us to get to know and love Jesus. I'm happy that I'm saved. Before, when I was rebellious, I was just like those mockers. And now I realize that the idea has hit me that it's time to be saved. God gave us time to be saved. He's giving other people time to be saved, too. He wrote about what will happen on the last day. Everything, including the earth mm -hmm. and the sky, will disappear. God's judgment when it happens is not slow. So again, Peter heard Jesus say he would come again when no one expected him to come. So the important thing is to be active with God witness to other people. And people will be busy with their own lives. People make excuses, oh, I'm too busy. I don't have time to die. Really? Well, people don't think about the return of Jesus. Nobody tells you I'm going to break into your house at 1 or 2 o'clock this morning. It'll be the same way when Jesus comes. Nobody will come. You 
won't warn anybody. So it's best if you're ready because the Son of Man will come at a time you don't expect. So be ready. It could be any time, today or tomorrow. We don't know. Stay in the faith. So you don't have to worry about judgment. I'm going to put this on hold. Peter was talking to believers. We know that he's coming back, mm -hmm. so we must go on the work. So, we're already looking forward to Jesus coming. We need to keep working and witnessing to people who need to know about Jesus. <coughs> Be careful. Get through this quickly here. This is important. Mm -hmm. What's important is like it says in the book of Acts, chapter one. We came together and they asked of him, Lord, wilt thou this time restore the king again the kingdom? Jesus answered, It's not for you to know mm -hmm. the times and the seasons which the Father has put in his own power. God has everything prepared, and he has a plan. So don't question. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy mm -hmm. Ghost is come upon you. Shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all of Judea and in Samaria and in the rest of the world. So this is our job to witness to the world and to live in a way that pleases God, not to ignore God. Fall in with the unbelievers. Be careful, because God's judgment is terrible. <coughs> still involved in the world today. We still see we still see you working. Still to this day. I pray for those who are not saved. 
who don't believe you, please open their eyes. They will see the truth and be saved and join the family and become part of the family of God. We thank you for everything you have done for us. In Jesus' name, amen.